Hey everybody! I've got a couple of chunks of Mally Burl here. Um, I'm putting some Mod Podge on them, which is really basically just white glue. And then several different colors of mostly blue, but a little bit of green mica powder on top. I'm going to try and make an underwater cavern kind of an egg thing out of this. So I shook off the excess mica powder, and then I'm adding some more Mod Podge and uh, some blue glitter. I'm not usually much of a glitter person, but I really wanted a little bit of sparkle on these things. So this is Passion Purple Pinata Ink, which I put a little bit too much in, but it turns blue. I mixed up some more clear resin and put just a touch of that in because I really want this to be transparent mostly. And then I stuck it in the pressure pot. So my initial plan was to glue this to a waste block, which I, I do. Um, I didn't really want to lose any of the burl, so I decided that putting it on a waste block would be the easiest way to save most of it. Um, so I went ahead and mixed up some 5-minute epoxy and used it to attach the end of the blank to this piece of walnut that I have. But the more I got to thinking about it, the piece of walnut that I've got chucked up there is basically in spindle orientation, so it's end grain that I'm epoxying the blank to. I wasn't really sure uh, if that was going to hold up well or not, so I decided to just go ahead and put a tenon on one end, and then that way I would have a very solid grip. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, vibration or the epoxy failing or tearing the wood out. This is my Easy Wood Tools round negative rate cutter. Trying to get this thing rounded off. So I'm just marking the ends of where I'm expecting the overall length of the blank to be so that I can kind of work out the dimensions of the egg and where to start. My initial plan was to have the end in the chuck that was going to be the bottom and the base of the egg and the end toward the tailstock was going to be the top. But once I started cutting, I realized that since I'd put a tenon on the end that's in the chuck, that the end on the tailstock was longer, and I thought that was going to look funny if the amount of wood was larger on the top than it was on the bottom. So I decided at this point that the end toward the tailstock is indeed going to be the bottom, and the end that's currently in the chuck will turn out to be the top of the egg. This is my little point tool that I made from a screwdriver. My favorite Thompson gouge.
that's my smallest spindle gouge I'm using to just refine that bead a little bit. So while I'm working on getting the shape refined here, um, I want to talk a little bit about what finish I'm going to use. I'm actually not going to use a finish at all. I'm going to use a top coat of resin, which I've not done before. But my really good friend Miriam from Miriam's Nature, she is the guru of all things resin and alcohol ink, among other things. And she has taught me that if there is any sort of a defect in your resin or something that you don't like, you can get rid of it by drilling it out, by carving it out with a Dremel. Um, pretty much, you can make a disaster of it. And if you recoat it with resin, you'll never know that there was a boo-boo there and it comes out crystal clear. So that seemed like a very appealing thing to try for this sort of a project because it will eliminate me having to do all of the wet sanding on the resin and also the polishing. So um, in order to facilitate this, I hooked up a barbecue rotisserie motor to the uh, to turn the spindle on my lathe. Lots of people do this. They use it for um, these barbecue rotisserie motors to do the epoxy tumblers. Um, Zach Higgins over at Envy Woodworks did a video recently on how he hooked up his uh, rotisserie motor to his lathe, which is also a Laguna, though I think he's he has the bigger size than me. Um, and I did it pretty similarly to what he did. I'll show you guys that at the end of this video. So I thought that I was ready to roll. I had done some sanding on it, and the more I looked at it, the more I decided that the egg shape wasn't quite what I wanted. It needed to be more tapered at the top. So I just took a little piece of scrap wood and carved out a divot in it that would kind of go around the egg tip and stuck a piece of shelf liner in there just to give me a little bit of support while I'm reworking this. And I took very careful, slow, and light cuts, hoping that I didn't have any issues with my glue block. I sanded all of it from, I think I did start at 80 just because, and I went up to 320, and I went to 400, um, just because I wanted to make sure that the wood was nice and smooth. Sand, sand, sand. Okay, so I put a coat of one pound shellac on just on the burl parts of this. The resin that I'm going to use for the top coat is Alumalite Amazing Clear Cast, and it recommends that you seal the wood because if there's any porosity in it, that can potentially cause bubbles in your finish. So I did dry this wood in the turkey roaster and I think that it's pretty dry but just to be safe I went ahead and did that. Um, this is denatured alcohol which dissolves shellac and I went back over and just I got a little bit on the resin and I didn't want any shellac on the resin because I didn't know if that would interfere with the way that the resin will the resin top coat will will look. So It's pretty cold in my shop, even when I have the furnace going. I kicked it up to 68 because resin really likes it warmer than I keep it in there while I'm there. This was pretty thick. Now this whole sequence, actually most of this video except the very end, 
is sped up 600%. So I'm not stirring the resin this fast. I'm stirring it very slowly and very thoroughly, trying to not introduce a whole ton of bubbles. But then I let it sit for a while and hit it with a torch off and on to try to pop whatever bubbles were coming up in my little mixing container. And on top of the shellac, I painted a little thin coat of the resin over the top of the burl parts. So at this point, the rotisserie motor is turning the lathe, but again, it's at 600% speed, so it looks much faster than it is. Now we're at real speed. I don't know what the rotisserie motor turns it at, maybe two or three RPMs, I'm not positive. So the application method for the top coat is basically to dribble it on there and smear it around, and as the thing rotates, it will self-level. The destructions with the resin said to make sure that you use enough. Uh, and it also recommended that you didn't mix up less than an ounce. So I went ahead and used an ounce. Probably didn't need that much for this size project, but. I bought a big clear plastic tub to put over the top of the lathe while this thing is spinning um, because obviously the shop is incredibly dusty and because I have the furnace running it's going to be blowing sawdust all over the place so that will help protect it from stuff falling on it and I used the lid underneath the project also with that silicone mat there but to protect the lathe, give me the opportunity to just let it make a mess and not have to worry about it. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. There's a little bit of sparkle in the resin portion of this egg. I added a touch of Marabou rainbow alcohol ink to it, which has like, must be some super crazy micro fine glitter. So that adds a little bit of sparkle in what is supposed to be the water part. So I use my little torch to pop any bubbles that are appearing. I don't really think that there was a whole lot. So then I covered it up and I let that run for I think five or six hours, and then I came and turned the motor off. So basically, I just mounted the rotisserie motor on a leg. I built a little bracket that slides on and off, and it's just simply a piece of three-quarter inch plywood that has a piece of stainless steel screwed to it, and then that stainless steel slides up inside the fins on the rotisserie motor bracket. So the rotisserie motor itself sits on the plywood and then both of those pieces sit on the leg. That's a 5 16 piece of bar stock. I got from Menards a 5 8 inch threaded rod and two 5 8 inch nuts. 
I drilled a hole in the end of the threaded rod with my drill press and then just epoxied the 5 16 piece of square stock into that. I'm really happy with the way this came out. The resin top coat looks fantastic and it saved me having to do all of that wet sanding, which is quite lovely. I've got my little underwater cavern egg there with the stalagmites and the stalactites and some sparkly bits. So I'm very happy with my first try. I've got some more burl pieces left, some I've already cast, so I'll probably be doing some more burl and resin art things here in the not too distant future. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all be safe out there.